It's time for basketball in Chattanooga as new head coach Lamont Paris leads the mocks in their 96th season. Couldn't be any more excited to be here because of what I saw in this university and the community. There's been some success, there's been some tradition, and what my goal is, is to take that to the next level. You're watching Inside Chattanooga Basketball, hosted by head coach Lamont Paris and the voice of the Mox, Jim Reynolds. Inside Chattanooga Basketball is presented by Allegra, 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca Cola, Chattanooga Coca Cola Bottling Company, the world's first Coca Cola bottler. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Basketball. I'm Jim Reynolds. On the program today, highlights of UTC's win over the Citadel Bulldogs from last week. Saturday, the Mocs, another tough game against the Mercer Bears, and just kind of a personal footnote on that game Saturday, it was a reunion of some of the best players that ever played for Coach Murray Arnold in the early 80s. People like Willie White, Stanley Lawrence, the Cochran brothers who played for UTC, James Hunter, Eric Smith, Stanley Lawrence, and more, all were at that game on Saturday. Also in this year of milestones at UTC, wrestling coach Heath Esslinger claimed the 100th win of his Mox coaching career that's now spanned nine years. We'll take a look at Coach Esslinger and all the success he's had as the head wrestling coach here in Chattanooga. All that and more when Inside Chattanooga Basketball returns in just a moment. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's first Coca-Cola bottler. ESPN 3's coverage of Southern Conference Basketball continues from Chattanooga's McKenzie Arena, where the 8-17 Mox hosts the 9-14 Citadel Bulldogs. Off balance three, not there. Bryant against the double team in the corner, gets the outlet pass away to Phillips. And here's McKenday London, puts it on the floor, penetrates, and McKenday London drops it in, mocks in front by 13. And here come the mocks, the lead back at nine for UTC. Chapman, nice move behind the back, and he lays it off the glass. And Chattanooga has pushed the lead out to 11. Najdawi. UTC playing without Nat Dixon, Chattanooga's leading scorer. Najdawi, the conference's player of the week with the Citadel answer. Reed knocks down the three, Alex Reed. And it cost the Citadel a timeout. It cost the Citadel a timeout. Here's Reed again from three, and again it's good. Boy, that is a deep, deep ball late in the game when you're trailing. That's a ton of confidence. 79-78, it's a one-point game with two minutes to go. Shot clock at 10, Foreman. Kale Foreman comes up big. He had 30 in the first meeting against the Citadel. And another big game tonight. He's got 22. Here's the three off the mark. Again from Reed, and this time Chattanooga with a rebound. Citadel on an 8-2 run at one point late in the second half to make it a one-point game. The Mox. Another little run now with a minute 29 to go. They've made it a five-point lead again, 83-78. Johnson to Reed, and Reed is fouled. I don't know if they ever really found a true position for him, but he fits the role wherever he is at. Mox will have to draw it up right in front of Coach Lamont Paris. Baptiste to corner three. Not there. Najdawi with a rebound. Johnson has it on the run. Down by three. Frierson to tie. 
the rebound, the putback, and it's a one-point game. About 12 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Chapman drives, baseline, open look, up and in. Chapman makes it 85-82, three-point game, 13 seconds left. Frierson, and a timeout is asked for by the Citadel with eight and a half seconds to play. Harris to inbound, Najdawi, seven seconds. Frierson from three with five, missed everything. Johnson to tie. One more time at the buzzer, won't go in, and the mocks hold on for the win. 85-82. Chattanooga tops the Citadel at home. The mocks improved to 9-17 overall, 3-10 in the Southern Conference, while the Citadel drops to 9-15. Their two-game winning streak is snapped. And they are four and eight in the Southern Conference. Two teams that have suffered a similar fate in Southern Conference action square off inside the McKenzie Arena as Mercer visits Chattanooga. Hey, he's one of the, he's probably one of the four, three best in the league. He might even be better than that. The lead goes to 16. Mercer's largest lead of the game at 29 to 13. Lead at 11 with 12 to go. Chapman, baseline. Before the women's game got started, a couple of those guys, maybe I, those were some fun basketball teams too. With Coach Mac McCarthy back in the mid 80s and as a lead goes to eight. This is as close as Chattanooga has been in a while. Make it a seven point lead, 57-50. Mox trailed by 13 at one point. They're on an eight to two run. And it's a seven point lead for Mercer. Still 11 minutes to go. Cohen drives. Tries to get around London, and McKinday London will take it away. And the Mox will look to dig into the lead. Here comes Chapman into the front court and draws the foul. Everybody else that's on the floor right now has one. Jelks is on the bench with four. I don't know if it's the easiest way to score, but it's one of them, and you don't lose any time off that clock. Six-point game, 57-51, the foot injury. Ross Cummings has stepped in and played well for Mercer. Here's Baptiste from three. London, tie game. Chapman off the screen, set by London, penetrates. Mox have their first lead since 18 minutes to go in the first half. About a minute 45 into the game was the last time Chattanooga had a lead. They lead it now, 71 to 69. Bob Hoffman at Mercer has seen enough. Chattanooga on an 8-0 run. Mercer has not scored in two minutes. Cummings can fix that. And there's the tip in by Ringer. And the foul. Seven of eight shooting. And from the free throw line, converts the three-point play. And Cohen. Kicks out, Cummings. Wow. Ross Cummings, the sophomore. One minute to go. Shot clock down to 10. Here's Strawberry. Kicks it out. Rivers. Wow. Dimitri Rivers. Mercer trying to win for the second game in a row. Strawberry hits both, and the lead goes back to nine with 22 seconds left. Chapman to Foreman, long three, and Jelks pulls it down. Open floor for Cummings, and he will slow it down, and looks like Mercer will just dribble off the final few seconds. And the Mercer Bears pick up the 84 to 75 win over UTC. Mercer improves to 12 and 13 on the season. They go to five and seven 
in conference play and win just their third game on the road this season. The Mox dropped to 9 and 18 overall, 3 and 11 in the Southern Conference and now 8 and 7 at home. Honoring all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors Cup. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors Cup. I really didn't even know I was I was even close to 100 wins until Jay Blackman had said something before the App State duel. When you hit those milestone marks as a coach, sometimes it's just a matter of resiliency. It's not really a matter of, hey, you're some great coach. You just, you, uh, you stayed in it long enough. I watch my parents help so many people expecting nothing in return. And I think one of the things that's lost in the coaching world today is, Hey, we love helping kids as long as they give us what we want. And that's not a coach. That would be more of an investor or whatever. Like, a coach is someone who helps kids no matter what. Uh, as long as they're under our leadership, we're going to give them our very best. And I think that I really learned that at home. My parents taught me that. They modeled that. They lived it out. They're doing it to this day. So I think that's why we really try to show these guys what it means to be a role model and a great dad. I reap the benefits of, of what that looked like in my life and I think it's why I'm sitting here today. For some reason, I've been given the privilege to do the thing that I love at a place that I love. Uh, I'm grateful that, you know, God allowed my path to be here and uh, do something like this, but I'm more grateful for the assistant coaches that put up with me and the athletes that come in every day and really work their tails off to, to give you a chance to do something like this. We'll see what the next hundred look like. I don't know what arena that will be in and what area of life, but uh, hopefully that I'll choose to continue to make a difference where I'm at. Shot in! This segment of Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Basketball. I'm Jim Reynolds along with Moxhead basketball coach Lamont Paris. I think I said the other day, you and I have had the same conversation for about 18 games this year. Boy, we were tied. We were down one or up one with two, three, four minutes to play, and one or two plays was a W, or one or two plays was an L. How many times have we done that? Many, several, right? It's been a ton. I remember the first time I said it, and I was just joking that every other game was going to be like this, and little did I know it would be probably every other game was going to be a one possession or two possession game. So tell me, have you passed that test in those one or two possession games to, to get better at doing it? You've been there a bunch. Yeah, we've gotten better. There were some, I think, we had a couple that were back to back that you could see significant improvements on s certain individuals especially, but I think overall we've gotten better. I think the more close games you get in, then, then obviously the better you're gonna perform in those. We've made improvements in, in that, to that end, but just need to keep on getting better. Go back to the Citadel game kind of the two key components for the Citadel, you guys did a much better defensive job on them than you did in Charleston, yes? Uh, we did, yeah. Yeah, we did a much better job defensively, um, particularly with their two 
best players in my estimation. Uh, I think they, they scored 60-some points in the first game. 68. To be exact, thanks for the <laughs> reminder. But uh, then we did a better job. I, I think we held them to 21 maybe or something like that in the second outing. Then you turn around, you go from a very unique run and up and down the floor against the Citadel to a, let's say, a little bit more patient team in Mercer on Saturday. Yeah, and they have a veteran group, and uh, uh, so they know what they want to get on every possession, and uh, they did a good job with that. Uh, and then there were a couple of plays, just really, really two or three plays that we didn't make, and uh, combined with they made, I don't want to take any credit away from them, but there were a couple that were just mistakes on our part. So, um, you know, that's how it happens. It's a, it's a thin line for success, and so we have to continue to try to manage those situations better at the end of the games. It's almost hard to believe we're approaching the end of the season with just a couple more games remaining until tournament time. It is unbelievable, um, to be honest with you. It just is the season seems like it's flown by. So uh, I think what put it in perspective most was, was after the Mercer game, just the realization that there was only one more home game. And it would be senior night. Um, we're looking forward to that and, and playing well uh, for Josh. and. But obviously we, we, we played before that, so we have, to, we have to prepare for Furman and get ready to go. We'll practice hard today the next couple days, and we'll try to perform better in that game and, and uh, send them a message that we can play and compete with them as well. I think that's a big thing going into the, in, into the uh, conference tournament is that you want every team in the back of their minds to know that you're capable of beating them. Tournament time just over a week away, and we'll preview the Southern Conference Tournament next time on Inside Chattanooga Basketball. Inside Chattanooga Basketball has been brought to you by Allegra, 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca-Cola, Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's first Coca-Cola bottler.